Okay, it looks like we're live. All right, so hi guys. Um, today we have Bobby here with us from Bobby's Perspective. He's an ex-vegan who was vegan for four years. Um, he's recently made the switch to eating animal products again. Since making the switch, he's been pretty vocal about the damage the vegan diet has caused him. Um, he advocates for a no labels approach when it comes to diet, which I think is fantastic. And I believe right now he's doing 30 days of carnivore. So um, yeah, why don't you introduce yourself, Bobby, and tell us about your journey, your experience, all that good stuff. Yeah, first of all, thanks for having me. And apologies to the viewers that might not be able to participate in this interview because of my delay. I'm a bit jet lagged, <laughs> just flew out to France. On that note, I have to say that in France, we have beautiful grass-fed beef. So it's an amazing place to do the carnivore diet or to do the carnivore experiment, rather. Nice. <laughs> I've been at it for almost 30 days now. So I'm doing it for 30 days. After that, I'm planning an epic cheat meal with croissants and all of that good stuff. <laughs> Reloading on those carbs. But as for right now, yes, 30 days of carnivore after me being a vegan for pretty much four years exactly and yeah should I go through my side effects how that came about or how I got into veganism Kate um let's how you got into it first okay so my background is that pretty much everybody in my family is either a hunter or a butcher so therefore I saw animal slaughter from a very very young age and I would even say that I was exposed to it a little bit too early so as a kid, I couldn't really handle it, uh, obviously. And when I saw the pigs or the goats getting slaughtered, I was crying as a kid. So I was never okay with killing animals. And later on, when my cousins became hunters as well, I just passed on that. I went to school. I completely got out of that venue, if you will. And yeah, later on in life, I found out about vegetarianism, veganism through spiritual practices, the Hindus have been vegetarian and whatnot, and I got interested in it. But I was bodybuilding at that time, and therefore I had no option to become vegetarian because I knew already that for building muscle, you actually need meat, right? Yeah. And yeah, as a vegan, I thought that is all misconception and you can build it with plants, but that's a topic for another day. So yeah, as a bodybuilder, I obviously wasn't vegan. I was eating meat six, seven times per day. And then after a while, whilst confronting myself with that information, quote unquote, and educating myself, I found out that, hey, you can do it vegan, right? And for me, it was actually a relief because I could align my own personal values of not harming animals with my sport pursuits, right? I could combine it and everybody wins, I thought. Wow, this is amazing, right? Nobody dies. I still can get jacked. Amazing. Yeah, so coming from a sport background, I made sure that everything is adjusted for. So therefore, when people say, yeah, you didn't do it right. Yeah, sorry, guys, I have to disappoint you because I've been a personal trainer since 2005. I've been creating meal plans and whatnot. And hence, I know exactly what is needed for bodybuilding pursuits. Hence, the protein was adjusted. I was eating at least two grams per body weight kilogram right? Mm. The carbohydrates stayed the same. The fat intake stayed the same. Everything was optimized for my weight. Yeah. Nevertheless, still lost 10 kilograms pretty much over the course of a couple of weeks. Really? So I wow. figured, yeah. So I figured, yeah, maybe it is because of me cleansing out, right? Or detoxing or whatever, the body getting adapted, no worries. I'm just going to increase the calories because that's what the vegans say, right? You just have to eat enough calories. Okay, good. Adjust the calories again, ate 300 more calories, 500 more calories, 600 more calories in forms of protein, in forms of carbohydrates. Carb up. That was the slogan back then. Yeah. No, nothing worked, right? Nothing worked. So I still felt pretty good, but all of a sudden, intuitively, I started picking up running. I started picking up running and I never was into running. I was into lifting weights, into boxing, into jujitsu, stuff like that. I didn't really enjoy the cardio sessions. But as a vegan, I felt, yeah, that feels natural to me, right? <laughs> so I started running, started doing a bit of yoga, still at the weights, but somehow the weights didn't appeal at all anymore. So the weights, I always felt weak when I was in the gym. 
I would be in the gym and I would feel frustrated because my performance would just decline. And again, I wasn't under eating at all. I have to say that because otherwise vegans will blame me again. So again, performance is decreasing slowly but surely, losing more weight. And then the real side effects kicked in at the two-year mark, I would say. So should I proceed okay. with the side effects here? Yeah. Or, um, or kind of so did you gain any muscle when you were vegan? Like what mm. for the first year? Um, was it working for you or it was just a slow decline? Mm, yeah, that's a good question. See, for all the people out there that will say, yeah, but Bobby, you looked good as a vegan. You were building muscle as a vegan. Guys, I had a short period where I tried out different approaches to veganism. And I know the vegans, again, they will love this, right? Because then they can point the finger and say, yeah, you've been raw vegan, you've been fruitarian and whatnot. Yes, I tried it out, but only because the whole foods approach failed me. I didn't feel good on the whole foods approach. So I tried it out, right? Fruitarian, yeah. raw veganism to see what will do the job. Nothing did. And needless to say, on the raw vegan and fruitarian diet, I lost even more weight right so after that period yes i rebuilt some muscle i was chugging down protein shakes plant protein shakes right at least three per day i was increasing the protein intake through tofu and tempeh and beans and whatnot my digestion wasn't happy about that choice but yes i was able to rebuild muscle okay. was i ever bigger as a vegan than i was as a meat eater no, <laughs> absolutely not. 100% not. But there was a rebuilding effect. They call it the memory effect, right? Mm, the memory yeah. effect. Once you've been there, you can get there again a bit quicker. So it is much, much easier to rebuild something than to go from scratch. So no, I didn't build my muscle per se on a vegan diet, but rebuild it. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so why don't you talk about some of the negative side effects you started experiencing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, with pleasure, but it's going to be a long list. Oh, no. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so as I said, in the beginning, I felt really good. I have to say that especially in the beginning of veganism, I felt more energetic and everything. It was amazing. And because I came from a bodybuilding perspective, I already ate clean, quote unquote, right? rice and chicken and broccoli basically so i didn't eat any junk food hence the argument that you cleared up your diet before veganism that didn't apply to my case and hence i said wow there's really something to veganism right veganism works and as drew he was on your podcast as well likes to say that is the honeymoon phase in the beginning you know it's like a relationship veganism and i call her vegana yeah. it's really really nice to you really good to you but after a while, she becomes abusive and you cling on to the relationship, right? Yeah, so anyways, after two years, constant energy loss, constantly weak, absolutely horrible performance in the gym, paired with depression, depression symptoms, just overall always in a bad mood, cranky as well. And usually I would get cranky like that maybe in the last couple of weeks of a brutal cut, right? When you're really dieting in a caloric deficit, maybe in the last two weeks or so. But then it is already, yeah, something that you will know will happen because you're used to it by bodybuilding standards that you will get a bit cranky. With bodybuilding, that is normal. With veganism, on the other hand, I was basically in that mood all the time no matter how much i ate so then another one which was absolutely terrible for me because i always had good teeth was dental decline so my teeth became super sensitive super sensitive i couldn't drink anything hot i couldn't drink anything cold i couldn't even eat any fruits anymore so i don't know how to yeah. apply the daily dozen of dr gregor with <laughs> sensitive teeth didn't work out so yeah, dental decay, then I had to, how, ma how many was it? Let me think here. Around about six cavities or so out of nowhere that I uh, had to treat. Did you have any Root. cavities before or? No, nothing. That was Zero. Nothing. Oh. My teeth were always A-OK. -okay. And yeah, dental cavities, root canal treatments. I remember here in, when I was in Bangkok three times per week. I would go to the dentist and yeah, do root canal treatments. That was a happy time, yeah, fun, a lot of fun <laughs> after work.
go to the dentist and sit there for four or five hours. That was great. Not. And yeah, what else? Libido loss. Absolutely horrendous. I talked about that very openly on my channel as well. Just no interest in sex whatsoever. I remember those days where I would sit in bed and rather watch series and eat vegan cereal crackers and whatnot. Uh, it was amazing. I felt essentially, honestly, now thinking about it, I felt like a 12 year old. Now, nah, bullshit. As a 12 year old, I had a better libido. So, like a six year old. Yeah back at home watching cartoons and eating cereals absolutely emaciated yeah other than that tremendous injuries my body was very very fragile so i tore my atl tore my biceps ripped my hamstring apart hernia everything like literally any sport injury that you can imagine happened to me and now again the vegans like to say that that happens to anybody so if you are into sports Injuries happen. Yeah, I would agree. Injuries happen in sport, but there is a big difference between vegans and non-vegans, and that is the healing. So yes, yeah. sure, it can happen, but meat eaters heal up and vegans don't. As a vegan, I was waiting years, essentially, for my injuries to heal, and they never would. After the reintroduction of animal foods, everything starts to regenerate and to clear up. It's absolutely amazing. Yeah, so that is about it, I believe. Oh, no, not true. I forgot the biggest one. Digestion, of oh. course. Yeah, digestion. When I was in Thailand, I was blaming it on the water supply. Because when you're a vegan, and I was an ethical vegan on that note, for the viewers that don't know, you blame anything else. Everything else is to be blamed, but not veganism, right? Maybe it is you, maybe you have some issue, maybe it is the environment. So I said, it must be the Bangkok water supply because the hygiene in Thailand is not that great. It must be the water down there. Yeah, but that didn't explain why I had to go to the toilet 16 times per day. 16? 16 oh times per day. Yeah, ask my girlfriend. It was a <laughs> pleasure to be around. I remember working 8 a.m. and I would get up around about 7 before leaving the house, I would go to the toilet five times. Five times. What? Yeah, it was, <laughs> was fun. Absolutely fun. And that was already on a low FODMAP vegan diet. That was already after reducing the fiber and eating yeah. predominantly white rice. Yeah, great, great times. So digestion was absolutely horrible. Digestion, elimination, gassy all day. I had pretty much every side effect in the book, I would say. If I wow. forgot something, I will tell you later on, but okay. those were the main ones. Yeah. Mm. Wow, that's crazy. Okay, <laughs> so um, let's get into why you started eating animal products again. I know you said you were an ethical vegan, so yeah, right. just what convinced you? Yeah, what convinced me, that's actually a deep subject. I'm trying to mm, do it as short as I can. The thing is this. Back in the day when I was still eating meat and I was still bodybuilding, the only reason why I considered vegetarianism or veganism was due to the exposure to psychedelic plant medicines. I traveled to Peru as well, to the Amazon jungle, and I was in contact with shamans. I was really, really interested in those ancient traditions because I found out that those traditions were around longer than the Judeo-Christian religions and whatnot. So that has been around for millennia. And I got interested in it because I personally had a very, very severe illness back in the day. That would be too much to go into here. I'm really trying to okay. cut it as yeah. short as possible. Yeah. Either way, I had a really, really hard, not only injury, but infection back in the day. That was 2011 and no doctor can, could cure me. And because that was the case, I had to look into alternative medicines back then. So I looked into acupuncture, into basically everything right cleansing healing detoxing ancient medicine chinese medicine and the only thing that helped me back in those days were psychedelic mushrooms so overnight those things cured my symptoms but as i said i'm going to keep it short here for anybody that is interested they can head over to my channel and check out my story on mushrooms either way i have a really really intimate relationship if you will with psychedelic mushrooms they were always my go-to in terms of healing and cleansing 
So when I was a vegan for four years, I couldn't listen to anybody. So people were telling me, bro, just try out some fish. I'm like, no, no chance for my experimentation here. No being should die. Right. That was really my perspective. And even my girlfriend was suffering and she wanted to try fish before me. So she was begging me basically because I was Bobby's perspective, right? The vegan channel. And she would yeah. ask me, yeah, how about I just try a little bit of salmon? I'm like, why don't you try flaxseed, right? <laughs> why don't you try DHA and EPA tablets? I was a total asshole. Looking back Aww. to it, I feel so sorry for my girlfriend. It's insane. Yeah, anyways. So I couldn't accept that, right? And for me, it was so out of the realm of possibilities to try out animal products because there is a being suffering. You don't just experiment on it. So I set myself the premise because I was already suffering one and a half years before I stopped. Basically, it was already a moment in time where I said, I have to stop veganism. And then I gave myself a deadline and I said, okay, right now I feel terrible, but because I am an ethical vegan and I never talked about this before. So this could be interesting for vegans with an open mind. One and a half years before stopping veganism, I said to myself, I feel terrible. I am suffering, but I'm going to give this thing here a fair shot. I'm going to go to the doctors. I'm going to do the blood test. I'm going to do the SIBO test. I'm going to adjust everything in my diet that I can adjust. And I'm going to supplement everything that I can supplement. I'm going to do all of those things that a good vegan does before I consider quitting. I give myself one year's time. I did it. The one year was a <laughs> absolute waste of time because nothing happened. It got worse and worse and worse. And I still stuck with it half a year longer even. I did it mm -hmm. one and a half years before considering it. So therefore, what made the shift? I was in Chiang Rai. And from there, I went to Pai, a little village in Thailand. And I participated in their little mushroom festivities here. And I had another psychedelic experience. And in that psychedelic experience, for people that don't know what I'm talking about, without getting too woo here, it is a very introspective but a very introspective experience where you can really look into your subconscious, if you will, right? It doesn't matter if it is real, a hallucination. The experience itself can teach you valuable lessons. At least that is my perspective. In that experience, I had the vision, if you will, of eating eggs again, right? Ethical eggs from happy chickens in Thailand. <sighs> so I had to consider it because that mushroom helped me out a lot back in the day in terms of physical healing. I trusted it, but I couldn't make myself do it. It took me around about two more months to consider this message. And I was coming back and coming back and coming back and coming back. I was always thinking back to those times. And after yeah, two more months or so, I'm sitting there. My teeth are so inflamed that my whole head, I have a migraine for a week straight. Right? Wow. I'm sitting there, I have a migraine for a week straight. I can't go to the gym anymore. I'm supremely depressed. I'm a total drag to be around, obviously. I just had my bowel movement number 37. And I said to myself, okay, I can't do this anymore. Fuck it. I can't do it anymore, really. This has been too much. It's long enough. I have to do something about it. So I went out and I got ethical eggs sourced from a farm in Chiang Rai, everything as ethical as possible, cruelty-free and whatnot. And yeah, I ate one egg. I remember I hated it because I was so indoctrinated. I was eating that egg like so boiled and I was telling myself how primitive it is. And we as humans, we evolved already. We should just take a supplement <laughs> or eat chia seeds. Ah, and on that note, again, because I already know the defense mechanisms of the vegans, I was eating chia seeds at that moment, and I replaced the chia seeds with one egg. Even that one egg was accounted for, right? I'm really yeah. analytical when it comes down to my food. Everything was accounted for. I replaced the calories. I didn't eat more calories. No, I didn't eat more fat. I didn't eat anything more, no, not more protein or anything on those lines. Everything was accounted for. So anyways, right, getting that out of the way, eating the egg. And I went through that experience, as I said, totally biased. And I was telling myself, it's not good. It doesn't work. And this and that. Nevertheless, 
I didn't feel much at first. I went to bed two hours later. And I know that story from Drew as well. And from Tim Sheaf and from so many others. And I know it sounds crazy, ridiculous, whatever, but it's the truth. For the first time, I wake up with a humongous boner. That's it. That's what happened. Sorry, guys. I know that vegans are jealous on our sex drive as meat eaters. But this is what happens, really. Not faking it. So still, I couldn't make myself continue with that experiment. And I stopped for a while, right? Mm -hmm. So it was a back and forth. So after three days, then I felt terrible again. That egg kept me going for three days, right? I felt all right. It was right just for one three egg. Days. It was just one egg. Yeah. I felt all right. My mood was lifted up, you know, for three days. And I said to myself, that is the relief. Because now I know that eggs don't work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was my psychology back in the yeah. day. In insane. So I said, now I know it, you know, the mental barrier is out. It was just a test, so to speak, to see if I really need it. And I don't. So that is great. It's out of the window now. I don't have to experiment any further. Yeah, great. But after three days, I started getting depressed again, libido loss again, absolutely everything was wrecked. On that note, I want to say to all of those chigans, right, the fake vegans, as a four year ethical vegan, when you never consume animal products, you really see the power of animal products. Those people that claim to be vegan and consume animal products occasionally behind closed doors, right, behind the scenes, and still claim veganism is the way to go. Guys, you are maintaining your health through those little bits and pieces of animal products. Please. I'm not going to be aggressive today. I'm not going to be angry today. I'm in a good mood. Please, please, for the love of God, don't promote veganism, but promote plant-based diets with animal products. Because once you push this agenda, if you will, yeah, at some point we won't have any eggs and meat for you to cheat with any longer. Right? If you really see what is going on right now, lab-grown meat, plant-based options, it is taking over the world and if you want to cheat with your little bits and pieces of eggs and fish please do not promote veganism because you are sustaining yourself with those very animal products so many people reach out to me i don't want to go on a rant but so many people reach out and tell me bobby what are you talking about i've been vegan for 10 years i feel great and when i ask them they really tell me Yes, yeah, so what if I had a little bit of fish, a little bit of eggs in those 10 years? I am mainly plant-based. Yeah, then please tell the people that you're plant-based yeah. and don't tell them that you're vegan. It's absolutely ridiculous. It's a disservice to humanity. But anyways, so as I said, three days felt great. After that, felt terrible again. And it took me, I think, one more month before considering finally to really give it a go then. Give it a go with the eggs give it a go with fish and from there kate i can tell you that every single animal product that i reintroduced improved my health tremendously i really see yeah. that every single animal product has its place dairy out of all things oh my god made my digestion absolutely perfect overnight and i always yeah. thought i'm gonna have lactose intolerance or whatnot dairy was the best for digestion fish on the other hand was great for energy Red meat was great for strength. There's always an attribute to an animal food. So absolutely amazing. Yeah, that, that is basically the story in a nutshell. It took me ages, took me way too long. If I could change anything about it, there's actually the slogan in the vegan community. And they say, if there's anything that I regret about going <laughs> vegan, it's not doing it sooner. Yeah. Right? Yeah, and my slogan would be, I have to rephrase that. The only regret that I have about veganism is not quitting sooner. Mm. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And did you experience anything negative when you started adding animal products back in or was everything just positive? No, that's a great question. No, zero. <laughs> zero. Nothing whatsoever. Here, I have to confess in front of the carnivores, I had one cheat meal during my carnivore time now. And the uh -oh. cheat meal was, check it out, half an avocado. Wow. <laughs> hey, 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 uh -oh. it's a plant, right? Uh -oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I had half an avocado. I had scrambled eggs and I said, 
All right, today I'm going to have half an avocado with the scrambled eggs. And let me tell you, my buddy didn't like it at all. Really? Just Not at all. I had severe belly cramps. I felt nauseous. It was horrible. I never experienced anything like that before, right? Yeah. So, some people might say that is your gut biome getting adjusted or whatnot. Okay, could be. But... After four years of not having any animal products, nothing, nothing. And as a bodybuilder, as somebody that is into sport, I always check the labels religiously, right? So I didn't even had something by mistake. I didn't have a little bit of dairy here or anything. It was all plant-based. After four years, reintroducing eggs, reintroducing sushi, those things were the first. Nothing. Perfect digestion. To be totally honest, <laughs> it digested a thousand times better than those plant foods. Because guess what? The diarrhea stopped straight away. Straight away. Right? So therefore, no, nah, no complications, only positives. Straight off the bat. Yep. So you said you didn't cheat at all through your whole time as a vegan. Um, mm. You really think that even just small cheats, like having an egg here and there, makes a really big difference? 100%. I talked about this on my last stream as well. Four years, and I was vegan a little bit over four years. Four years, 100% plant-based, right? And there was this one incident that I completely forgot about. It was at my end. It was basically, mm, i say, three months or so before quitting veganism. I lived in Bangkok, and I would always buy frozen spinach because somehow I couldn't get fresh spinach around here. So I would buy frozen spinach. And I bought this package without really checking. And that never happens to me. As I said, I'm really religious about it, right? And I would always make my pumpkin, tofu, spinach, mushroom bake. So I would bake everything in the oven. It was actually quite enjoyable. Not the effects of it, but the taste. <laughs> And vegans always eat for taste. So I would eat that every single day as a post-workout meal. And after two days of eating that pumpkin spinach bake, I started feeling much, much better, right? And I said to my girlfriend, this is it. You have to combine the pumpkin with the greens and the mushrooms with the tofu. Then it's perfect, right? It is the complex carbohydrates with the tofu protein that is really well-absorbed perfect combination now i feel better right yeah so after three days i went through that spinach and throwing away that package somehow i felt i have to double check for whatever reason so i check the ingredients and i see it's imported from france on that note how great is that right shipped from france to thailand mm. absolutely sustainable fantastic veganism is the way to go <laughs> i check the label and i see that it is French traditional spinach mixed with full fat dairy, right? With cream. Oh no. <laughs> yes. I was outraged, right? But hey, the damage was done. And later on, right? Like a couple of months later, I realized, wait a second, you know, I felt so much good with that spinach. After that, I ate the regular spinach again and I felt shit again. So, what I'm telling you, even if you cheat with something totally minuscule, like spinach with dairy inside, that already can save certain people. Absolutely. Overall, I still didn't feel great. Overall, the introduction of more animal foods is better for your health, for sure. But little bits and pieces, oh man, they go a long way. They're so powerful, for sure. Yeah. So do you think a lot of vegans are cheating um, fairly regularly and yeah, just not coming clean about it? I don't think that. I know that. You know that, okay. <laughs> I know that for sure. Yeah, the thing is, I never expose anybody that comes to me in private and tells yeah. me about the issues because I know how it feels. But about many, many vegans that came out lately, I knew it months and months before. About other vegans that will come out, I know it already. So behind closed doors, we are already talking because let's be honest, man, many people, they are so indoctrinated and so was I. And they're looking for somebody to talk about, right? They cannot even believe that there is an option out of that realm of veganism, that there is an option for you to be healthier by eating those bad foods. Because in the vegan dogma, meat, dairy, those foods give you a heart attack. 
It's the worst thing that you can put into your body. So therefore, they connect to me behind the scenes. And I know that there is a tremendous amount of people that cheat. Yeah. Yeah. And why do you think so many um, ex-vegans are coming out uh, like recently? Why mm. is it happening now? Do you think it's just a snowball effect? Like mm. they're seeing other people do it? Yeah, yeah. You could call it the snowball effect or the hundredth monkey phenomena. There is this monkey phenomenon. I don't know if you ever heard about it. No. When a group of hundred monkeys picks up a certain trait out of a sudden on a completely different... It actually was measured in a island scenario. There was an island with hundred monkeys and they were picking up a new trait of drinking out of a cup almost. They used a little bit of wood to drink out of a cup. And mm -hmm. once that threshold of hundred monkeys was reached on a totally separate island, other monkeys started picking up the trait. So that is the theory behind it is that there is some sort of collective consciousness in the DNA mm. of species and evolution, right? And that would translate to humans as well. So therefore, that could be <laughs> one reason, or maybe I'm philosophizing a little bit too much. <laughs> Other than that, I feel that people just started feeling comfortable and started seeing that other people experience the same issues. I think that is a big one because before that, everybody was claiming that the vegan diet is the healthiest, right? The healthiest diet, you will have the best results as a vegan. It is, by definition, scientifically approved. The World Health Organization already approved it for all stages of life, right? The whole yeah. vegan diet is an appeal to authority fallacy by that definition. And hence, people cannot believe that there is something wrong with it. And once people started speaking out of it, started sharing their experience, people recognize it themselves. They're like, hey, wait a second, I feel bad as well, right? And they feel comfortable coming out. On top of that, with so many ex-vegans immersing now, there is basically a whole new community. And let's be honest, people seek community. That is the truth. We are tribal animals. We always seek some sort of comfort. And I think that the ex-vegan community can give those people yeah, the new support system, if you will. And they feel all right. They're not completely abandoned, right? Left yeah. out of the cult alone and... Yeah, nobody gives them any support, any love anymore. So hence, it is good that we have those support groups for those people that need it. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and I know one of the big reasons you were vegan was for the animals, for the ethics. Um, has your sp perspective changed on that? Do you still think veganism mm. is more ethical? No, absolutely not. And this is why I want to come to Australia myself. I'm in contact with certain food producers down there and it's amazing how many reach out to me now because farmers are in a world of shit at the moment with all of those vegan should i call them protesters yeah. terrorists terrorists yeah, <laughs> vegan terrorists absolutely and their farms are being stormed it's absolutely ridiculous horrendous stuff and meanwhile no it is not more ethical because what are the ethics based on, right? If we are talking about the taking of a life, okay, then we have to talk about quantity, I yeah. assume. I don't know, right? Should be. So if you kill one huge animal, that's that. One animal is dead, and a lot of people can feed on it. Meanwhile, when I hear about crop production, right, how many billions and billions of animals are dying there, vegans... You know, they don't blink an eye. Yeah, yeah just a couple of insects. Yeah, okay, right. Let me play devil's advocate here. What is the difference then between the insects and the cow? You tell me. Yeah, it's more sentient. It's... Okay, so I can play the whole thing again here with you vegans with this, uh, how do they call them? Name the trait. Okay, so what if the cow has the intelligence of a cockroach then? You know, what happens then? Am I allowed to eat the cow? What if you have the intelligence of a cockroach, right? Name the trait works both ways. Yeah. It is absolutely ridiculous. And aside from that, it's not only cockroaches, right? Let's not be silly here. It is rabbits. It is foxes. It is deers. It is kangaroos. It is birds that get starved because their food source, which are the insects, are gone, right? So many birds are dying in crop production. If you care about birds, right, then you shouldn't eat crops because otherwise, why do you blame me eating chicken now? It doesn't make sense. In food production, you will always have buy kill. And we already know, and it is a fact, that the buy kill of crop production exceeds the 
grass-fed beef tremendously. That's just what it is. So therefore, ethically, I had to come to terms with that, that everything dies in this world. I personally still am not a fan of killing, but Kate, to be honest, once you reintroduce those products, Wim Hof, the Iceman said, feeling is believing. Once you see how your body reacts to those foods, you have to accept that reality. Otherwise, you're just playing make-believe. After seeing how your body reacts to those foods, you understand that ancient wisdom, if you will. You understand, okay, this is how the body evolved. This is the fuel. That's it. I cannot fight it. You have to submit, so to speak, to reality. This is it. All right. Now I have to go from here. As a vegan, I was living in a fairy tale, in Disneyland, if you will, right? The animals are our friends. Don't eat them. Nobody dies. But I say that if you close your eyes to suffering, you produce more suffering. What do I mean by that? If I close my eyes and I sit in front of a bowl of quinoa and I tell myself, I'm so righteous, I'm cruelty free, you know and I know, billions of animals died for those crops. But I can tell myself that I'm not eating an animal. Great, right? Ethically free, karmically free. But it's not. Every time you close yourself to suffering, you close yourself up, you produce more suffering unconsciously behind the scenes. So therefore, I had to come to terms with it. The biology never lies. Biology never lies. Everything else is a dogmatic belief system, an idea, but that is not based in reality, right? Oh, sorry, I'm getting a call here. No, that's okay. Yeah, so it is not based in reality. And hence, once you understood what the reality of things is, you can go from there and your ethics develop from there. But those ethics are grounded in reality. And hence, now, I have a totally different outlook on this life, a completely different worldview. Now I'm actually looking forward to going back to Macedonia in around about one month, and I'm going to join my family, <laughs> which are hunters and butchers. Wow. So I'm going to go hunting for the first time in my life. This is how my ethics look like nowadays. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what, do you, what are you going to go hunting for? I don't know what animals are in Macedonia. Wild boar, mainly, and deer. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but maybe start with rabbits. They have a lot of rabbits there as well. Uh, yeah. Something smaller. Uh, oh, yeah, whatever I can catch. Yeah, <laughs> that'll be a change. <laughs> oh. um, yeah, quite a bit. Okay, so what does a day of eating look for, like for you now? Like how are mm. you eating carnivore? Yeah, so it's 100% animal-based aside from that little cheat meal there. That pesky little avocado that almost killed me. So I'm... Um, Usually starting with eggs, what I like to do is I like to make an omelette out of egg whites and then put the raw egg yolks on top with a little bit of fish roll sprinkled on mm -hmm. it. That's basically my breakfast. Yeah. Then I had some French cheese with it as well. A little bit of French cheese with the omelette from time to time. Second meal would usually be some sort of meat. Yesterday I had entrecote, which is a humongous steak here okay. with butter on the side sometimes i do burgers everything around here is grass-fed as i said everything is grass-fed we're living next to a farm and it's absolutely amazing uh -huh. here in france the food quality is insane i have raw butter as well so delicious uh -huh. sometimes i just eat the raw butter like a candy steak so yeah. it's <laughs> a little delicious yeah <laughs> I, lo I love it <laughs> yeah so some sort of meat I still really enjoy eating raw meats and raw fish as well. So sashimi, if I can get my hands on it, sashimi is absolutely mm -hmm. amazing. Salmon sashimi is my favorite. Yeah, what else? That's basically it. It's just meat, fish, eggs, and some cheese. Really simple. Yeah. Super simple. Yeah. yeah, that is about it. Um, Nothing and, else. And you said you're having dairy as well, and that's helping you? Yeah, oh. that was when I wasn't carnivore 100% mm. because I know there is a way to do carnivore and still include carbohydrates, but that's not what I'm doing at the moment. So okay. what fixed my digestion back in the day was yogurt, right? Mm. But yogurt has just too many carbohydrates for this zero-carb experiment for me right now. So yeah. hence, I'm not eating it. The only dairy that I'm eating right now is the French cheese. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um and do you think you're gonna start adding other plant foods back in after the month mm. not avocados so, maybe 
<laughs> yeah, maybe not. <laughs> now, so as you said in the beginning, I'm all about no labels. I have no interest in being team carnivore, being zero carb forever. I actually appreciate that I have the option of going zero carb now because as a vegan, I was always trying to exclude carbohydrates. And guess what? It never worked, right? Everything has carbs when you are a vegan. So hence, I'm treating this experiment as a reset button. But coming from bodybuilding, I did the ketogenic diet in 2004, I believe, for the first time. Yeah, wow. it's a long time ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and there was, yeah, and there was already carnivore back in the day because we didn't use any nuts or avocados back then. It was all fatty meats. So mm -hmm. I already did the carnivore diet, but it has been a long, long time ago. Hence, I didn't get the chance to reset my body on no carbs, right? Just to get fat adapted again. But in terms of bodybuilding, carbohydrates definitely work. The sport of bodybuilding is 120 years old and carbohydrates around your workouts especially definitely give you an edge. Without carbohydrates, it's an amazing tool to cut or to maintain, right? The ketogenic diet is perfect for that. In the long run, however, I definitely will need to get some plant foods back. Plant foods being white rice and certain fruits like bananas. I personally do not miss them. If it would come down to personal preference or how I feel, I would stay away from those plants forever. Really, I have no interest whatsoever in consuming them. But for my personal egocentrical goals here of vanity, yes, I will need to reintroduce some plants, unfortunately. Yeah. Mm. So you've noticed a decline with your workouts without the carbs? I wouldn't say it's a decline right. per se, but I know the feeling of being constantly flat. Carbohydrates just storm to your muscle and they fill it with glycogen, right? This is how you get the pump. And as I said, I've been experimenting with ketogenic diets before. There is a good reason. And actually, this is a topic that people need to understand as well. There is a good reason why certain things work in a bodybuilding context. In a bodybuilding context, Two grams of protein per body weight works. Moderate carbohydrates, moderate fat, adjust the carbohydrates to your goals, bulking or cutting. This is it. The rest is consistency. That's it. No magic there. But now you see a new movement. Hey, can I build muscle as a vegan? Can I build muscle as a raw vegan? Can I build muscle on carnivore? Yes, you can and you can't. The most ideal way to do it is with a classical bodybuilding approach, which includes the carbohydrates, includes the high quality protein sources and a moderate fat amount. That's just how it goes. So therefore, for bodybuilding, not for health, yes, you can't really get around the carbs. Yeah. It's just the case. Mm. Okay. Um, I have a couple questions in the chat for you. So mm. any, any advice when grass-fed meat is hard to find or it's unaffordable? Which European country would be good to live in for affordable grass-fed animal products? Mm. Okay, so let's start with the second one. Yeah. I just got to Europe and right now I'm in France. I will go over to Germany. I will travel the Balkans as well. The Balkans are always very, very cheap when it comes down to foods because, yeah, we have a humongous meat culture down there. That's all we eat, right? When you go to Macedonia, for example, you don't buy one steak. You can actually go to shops, they're called Skarana Kilo, which means you buy one kilo of meat. That's it. Sorry. You just order one kilo or two kilos. There is no in between, right? Mm. <laughs> That's the perfect place for the carnivore diet. And hence, I would say that those areas are definitely cheaper than the European ones. But here in France, living around those dairy farms and around those yeah, hunting grounds, if you will. It is very cheap as well. I bought a humongous entrecote, as I said, 400 grams for $1.50 grass wow. fed. Insane. Yeah, I don't <laughs> want to leave anymore. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty amazing. So therefore, as for right now, I can't really tell you which country is cheaper or whatnot. I have to experiment myself. But what was the other one again? Um, grass fed grass beef. fed's hard to find or mm. if it's unaffordable. Yeah, I personally still will say that the quality should go over quantity and that you, after all, if veganism taught me anything, it is about sourcing your food right. Yeah, if nothing else, source your food right. Do not support some sort of 
animal factory farming doesn't help anybody doesn't help the animals doesn't help you either right so i wouldn't take something out of the supermarket if you cannot get grass-fed beef i understand that it's more expensive but it's well worth it right on the other hand talking to rob tanks the food producer from australia that i'm in contact with he said that actually aside from the states 90 percent of the animals are actually grass-fed but corn finished i have to look into that first in order to understand what is truly going on i do understand that the gut biome of those animals has to be adapted first to corn before they can eat it at all and hence they will eat some grass but again i personally do not give out any recommendations of eating animal factory farming hey put in a little bit of overtime and eat some quality meat it's better yeah. for you better for everybody yeah. yeah um so another question bobby said that his ethics have completely changed since he decided to drop veganism when mm. he was a vegan um was he just in denial when presented with all the facts mm. did he feel like he was lying to mm. himself Wow, that's a great question. Yeah, absolutely. You have those automatic responses almost where you just tell yourself the same things over and over again. So when somebody told me, yeah, but how about crop production? Animals are dying there. You would just ridicule it because your tribe is ridiculing it. Yeah, a couple of animals, a couple of, you know, it's incidental. It is accidental. That is not something that is happening every single time. So in your vegan worldview, you think that there might be one rabbit that just yeah, ends up in the combine harvester. And that's it. You know, uh, whoopsie, it's an accident. You know, it wasn't planned. Nobody ever talks about the destruction of the environment through monocultures. Nobody talks about that at all whatsoever. And this is why I want to make this documentary to expose it. Because, listen, guys, when I became a vegan, I didn't just become a vegan to become vegan, right? To get a vegan label, a vegan stamp on my forehead and to go about things. It was all about truth. And I think this is what we all should be interested in. In truth, right? If there is something that is going on behind the scenes in the animal industry, you want to know about it. Great, me too, right? Let's take a look. Let's see what is going on. Fantastic. Maybe we should make other choices now grass-fed beef wild game and whatnot makes sense but now once you find out that there are so many animals dying for your quinoa don't you want to know about that i personally wanted to know and once i found out about that that was basically before quitting veganism as well i got exposed to that information and i really started researching it two or three months before quitting and once i realized hey wait a second man there are more animals dying I couldn't stay vegan anymore because that is the truth. So don't be vegan, be a truth seeker, if you will. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do mushrooms help in reducing inflammation and brain inflammation? 100%. Yes, 100%. And again, I'm not going to take this into, into woo woo, into wishful thinking. All I was ever interested in is results, right? Does it help? I had chronic inflammation, I had chronic depression after the ingestion of magic mushrooms no recommendation on that note right no medical professionals here and if it's illegal in your country don't touch it but yes it helped tremendously and right now we have this organization in california called maps that are researching that field and they see how tremendous mushrooms are for neuroneogenesis so it produces new brain cells and it starts rewiring the brain over and over again lowers inflammation and alleviates depression it's absolutely amazing we saw that in the field of medical marijuana as well cbd is a key word here absolutely mushrooms helped tremendously with inflammation it went even so far that my right leg was so inflamed that it was partially paralyzed and after the ingestion of mushrooms the swelling was gone and i could walk again i know it sounds miraculous sounds like a story out of the bible but it's really the case yeah okay um someone said can you debunk dr joel khan he claims he's been vegan for 40 plus years and still perfectly fine mm. yeah i mean let's be honest here debunk him how i yeah. haven't had coffee with him yesterday and he was <laughs> sipping a little bit of milk into it right i didn't see him i didn't catch him if i ever do then i will but yeah this is just very fishy to me see joel khan and garth davis they both run an organization called 
Jewish veg. And guys, I'm not going to go into conspiracy theories here. That's not what it is. Many people say the Jews, they are the Zionists, or whatever. That's not what this is about at all. But even if it would be called Muslim veg or Christian veg, right? I would be skeptical. It's a religious organization. And religion always comes with dogma. That's just what it is, right? So everybody that confuses nutritional science with religion has to be at least questioned in my book, right? There is a dogmatic belief system attached to that. If you look into Garth Davis, again, they run the same organization. When he talked to Bart K, essentially every single thing that he said was dismantled pretty, soon, pretty quickly. And hence, again, I do not know the guy. I haven't seen him cheat on butter or eggs or whatnot, but I know for a fact. I know them personally. People that have been vegan over seven or eight years, no chance, man. They've been cheating with certain foods here and there, even accidentally, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I think that's everything. So unless there's anything else you want to say, then we can probably wrap it up. Yeah, what I want to say is just for if there are vegans watching, and I know they're watching because the vegans are the biggest fans. They always like to watch anti-vegan videos. <laughs> I just want to let you know that I, as I said many, many times by now, was an ethical vegan, and I didn't want to stop veganism. I really gave it a fair effort. I even pushed the line one and a half years longer than I should have. I really tried it all. I wanted to stay vegan. I couldn't stay vegan. All I'm asking from you is give yourself the benefit of the doubt. Maybe there's something wrong with your diet. Just try it out. Give yourself the freedom of experimentation. Go to a farm if you want to. Really get involved with animals. As a vegan, you claim you like animals. Do you see animals on a daily basis? Get some backyard hens. Why not? Look after some chickens and try some ethical eggs. Try it out for a week, for a month. Give it a fair effort and see what will happen to you. To break out of that dogma, you have to experiment. You have to try it out. And then, hey, if it didn't work, okay, go back to the plants. No worries. But don't stay in it for the wrong reasons. Just give yourself the benefit of the doubt. Question your dogma, question your religion, if you will, and see what will happen. After that, you can still be vegan for the rest of your life if it doesn't work yeah well said yeah okay right. so yeah guys check out bobby's youtube channel if you haven't already i'm sure most people have um yeah i guess that's it all right kate thanks for having me again apologies i'm still a bit sleepy didn't eat anything <laughs> today jet lagged i still had a lot of fun talking to you thanks for the interview thanks for having yeah. me and all the best on your journey oh thank you <laughs>